you know, it's kind of funny how this country keeps going with all the different beliefs. And so, you know, everybody's got different beliefs in this country, but the USA, but uh, there seems to be one common denominator. Everybody wants to make a living or make money. You know, I always vote Republican, and uh, I don't agree with the Republicans on everything, but I just vote straight Republican until they start doing some crazy stuff like, you know, you already know some of the stuff that's, it, it's not even worth talking about. I don't want to get sidetracked, but what's the common denominator? Running a business, making money, being independent, being free, as free as you can be. I mean, nobody's really free. The only freedom is freedom in Christ, you know. When you're down here in this body, you're limited by boundaries and rules and laws. You know, the flesh is nothing but sin, so the flesh is under law, you know. That's why the sky is blue, because blue represents the law. You're under blue letter law in the flesh, in the natural. So when you tell people, hey, you got to walk in the spirit, they don't even understand that because they're still, they still try to, they try to be good in the energy of the flesh. They try to keep some kind of rule, you know. But anyway, another thing I want to say is not only, not only is everybody uh, believing different even within certain factions people believe different even within certain homes people believe different I got rid of the TV like 30 years ago I got rid of music 10 years ago and if you tell people like when you pick up with ride share and they say, "Well, you mind turning the radio?" I said, "I'd rather you, you could. I'd rather you use your phone because I don't. I don't even know how to work this radio, to be honest with you. And that's the truth. I don't even know how to work it. I could probably turn it on and scan some channels, but I don't even know how to work this radio. I usually just crack the window for a little bit of noise, distraction if they're not wanting to talk." But almost everybody around you has a different belief system. Even let's say you let's say you even went to a local fundamental independent Baptist church, which are the closest doctrine except for the legalist part. They're the closest, and the ones who talk about the tithe, the tithe is not for the church at all. Everybody should know that. I don't know why they I don't know why they don't know that. But anyway, the reason they don't want it the reason they don't they know it, but they just don't want to believe it because they want somebody to give their money to keep their little church going that they started with 5013C, which is yoked up with the government. Anyway, even within that faction, you're going to have different beliefs. But I promise you, there's only one truth. Let God be true and every man a liar. There's only one doctrine that's real. That Jesus alone saves and it's by His Spirit that we can do anything. Not of works, lest any man should boast. It's faith alone and Jesus alone. <clears throat> and if anybody adds to that, if they add the tithe, if they add reading your Bible, if they add King James, if they add anything to the finished work of Jesus, if they add you never miss a day of church, if they add uh, you got a uh, whatever it is, any I don't care what it is, if they add anything to that, uh, they've gone into their own belief system. I mean, if you read 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, you'll see that it's faith alone and Jesus alone. And love your neighbor as yourself, which is, which is not based on rules. It's just doing unto others as you would have them do unto you, you know. But you can't even base it on that because your understanding 
your boundaries are different than everybody else's. So what you've got to do is see what the Word says about boundaries and stand on those. I promise you, when somebody's trying to cross your boundary without asking you, is this crossing your boundary? They have ill, malicious intentions. The psychopath always, the predator always wants to cross boundaries. The predator is always gang stalking. The predator, the psychopathic predator, which I've seen them in the Baptist church. They're psychopathic predators in the Baptist church. And they justify wanting to get revenge when the Bible says don't take vengeance because I will repay. But they want to be the judge and the lawgiver and attack people they disagree with and think they're God. And I'm not talking about just speak against them. I'm talking about persecute them continually. They don't stop. And they have been propped up by the people around them in their little box that they think they're doing right. And they're not. We know that Scientology is a lie from the pit of hell. But I don't, perse I don't chase them and chase them down. We know that Mormons are false doctrine. I don't chase them down and persecute them. We know that uh, Louis Farrakhan is false doctrine. But I don't, we don't chase them down and persecute them. We just speak the truth. You let God deal with people and you speak the truth. There's some fundamentalists that actually have stepped in to being their own God. They think they're God. They will persecute people and justify it. And even if somebody's a believer, they persecute because they have a different belief system. I could see you speaking against it once, but to continually chase somebody down, that's sick. That's a psychopath. That's a that's a that's a miserable being. That's a pathetic, miserable creature. Really. To be honest with you. And it shows that they had some kind of they have some kind of uh, childhood uh, trauma or something where they never overcome that, and they can't overcome it because it also shows that they're, they're not introspective. Because when you look at another person, you're looking at yourself. The only difference is that other person chose a different path. Now, when Jesus spoke to the Pharisees who were chasing him down, he says, you're of your father, the devil. Jesus didn't chase them down. They came after him. So the Pharisees that chase me down, the Pharisees that chase you down, just like Jesus, because you don't run with them to the same excess of right. You don't run with them. Just like Jesus says, why are you trying to kill me? And the first thing they say is, I'm not trying to kill you. Yeah, you are. They've always done it to all the saints, all the elect, from the prophets, from Abel, Adam, Eve tried to kill Adam. Well, she she tried to pull it, but he wasn't into deception. From Adam all the way to the last saint, the same storylines being played. John the Baptist, Jesus. And, and you ask these people, you say, why are you persecuting me? Why are you trying to kill me? They say, I'm not trying to kill you. I'm not persecuting you. Yeah, you are. You're on my heels daily, weekly, monthly. You never go away. What's up with that? Why are you trying to... Why are you chasing me, Wally Cody? Why don't you just uh, do your own thing? Because you have no content. You have no... You're not hearing from anything from above. It's all uh, mockery and mimicking and puppet. You're just puppeting what somebody from uh, the seminary taught you. You have no independent thought. You're just... You're just a copy. 
You're a copy. You're a copy of a denomination, or you're a copy of a uh, seminary, or you're a copy of some kind of preacher or belief system. But you have not. You don't have your own ability to discern. Through the years, I've talked to uh, a bunch of people online, and there's a lot of women who've made comments on my channel. You know they have the truth because they speak from a different perspective, and you learn from them, and you say, yeah, that's right. Because the body of Christ learns from each other. But the ones who come in, and they just mimic and copy and puppet what you say, you know that. I was, uh, it's probably been about a year, I was texting a friend of mine. She had, she and I talk about the code, and uh, she sent the code back. I'd sent something in code, she sent it back with a different perspective, and I learned, even though I'm a master at the code, <laughs> I don't want to say master, but, but you still learn from somebody else. Who's, who's learning from you, you learn from them. You learn from them, they learn from you. That's what the whole, that's why we're here. The pieces of the pie are trying to get back to wholeness. Even though you got the Holy Spirit, which is wholeness, you're still facing, facing off with the pieces of the pie to get back to wholeness. The body of Christ, each member building up the rest of the body, you know? Imagine your whether it's your body, your hand, your forearm, your leg, your foot, whatever it is. Many members make the whole body, so each member is communicating back and forth. Hey, I twisted my ankle. Help! And the hand reaches down and says, "Okay, what you need is this." Because sometimes people come up and say, I, "I see a contradiction in the Bible. How, how do I fix it?" Well, you need to look back up and look at it from this perspective, you know, because there's no contradiction. There's no contradiction. So when you rightly divide it, you're going to eventually agree 100% in your doctrine. And you'll be able to see the false doctrine, but if a person is really saved, you don't beat them up because they have some wrong doctrine. You just, you're patient with them and you help them, help them see the truth, you know. Let's say you got a witch on there who's speaking all this junk. You don't have to persecute them or attack them. You just speak the truth and you're done. If people want to hear a witch, they're going to hear a witch. If they want to follow the Mormons, they're going to follow the Mormons. You can't force somebody to, to believe like you. You can't force something. You, and you can't, you can't take vengeance and justify it. <laughs> I mean, it's. I mean, what, one of the biggest things, one of the biggest things that blows my mind, you'll see somebody at church who's got a got a four wheeler truck on the back. They they're going to church. And they they love they love they're going to Baptist church and they love it. They know everybody and they're all working. They're all there hanging out all the time. And on the back of their truck, they got the the snake. Don't tread on me, the snake. And so they're identifying with the snake, but they're they're so involved in the church. They blinded themselves with activity that they can't even see their own contradiction. The snake, why would you identify with the snake? Don't tread on me in Genesis 3. Her seed will bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Why would you identify with the snake when you're at church every time the doors are open and justify it? And, and, and somebody who calls you out, you get mad and you want to take vengeance and attack them. What is that about? Not only are you identifying with the snake, you're acting, not only are you getting your identity in the snake, when somebody calls you out on it, you act you actually act like the snake because you want vengeance because you think you're God. So that tells me the Baptist church has been infiltrated with these so-called believers who identify with the snake and want to take vengeance just like the snake, just like Cain. So you got a lot of people in church who are members 
who identify with Cain, identify with the snake, and identify with vengeance. Hella. That tells you how twisted the human heart, the human mind, the people who are in a box, who can't think outside the box, it tells you how twisted they are. I can't recollect ever seeing a pastor with a snake on the back of his car. <laughs> if I if I would have, I'd have said, wait a minute. Why you got a snake on your car, pastor? What's that about? <laughs> Why would you identify with a snake? Why would you identify with a box? Why would you identify with a 5013C government uh, sponsored uh, building? Because <laughs> you've been brainwashed. You're a clone. You're a clone of a clone of a clone of a clone. Anyway, back to what I was saying at the beginning. It's so hard to believe we even even function down here in this country with so many different beliefs. But... The, the the good thing about it is everybody's wanting freedom, right? In the natural, but hopefully that will spill over into the spiritual and they'll say, oh, okay, I want freedom, but am I free spiritually, you know? I once was lost, now I'm fine. I once was blind, but now I see. Hopefully that freedom that they're looking for in the natural will spill over and they'll say, I want to be free spiritually. I want to escape the box. I want to say, escape the 666 cube flesh mind. I want to escape the denominational D name. Denomination means D name. I want to escape that. I don't want to just hang out with the people who prop up me, prop up my beliefs because the good old boy network, when it could be contrary to the Bible 100%. I don't want to hang out with just a good old boy network because they, they might be believing a lie. They might have a don't tread on me on the back of their truck, you know. They might be identifying and building up the snake and not even know it. Hello? Hello? Somebody? <laughs> you, go to, you go to the church and it's Halloween and they justify <laughs> Well, it's Halloween. We're going to do something. But we're not going to. We're going to do like the world. Well, you're celebrating the world's holiday. What's that about? We're not going to do like the world, though, does. But we're going to celebrate Halloween. Do you see the contradiction even in that comment? These people are sick. They, they, they want to justify themselves before their people and take them down a primrose path to the devil's side of the game. And you might say, well, why'd you say game? Because the game is winning souls down here. That's what the game is. G is number seven, Golgotha. It is finished. A-M-E is blood, water, spirit. The game is for people to get saved, that's the game. And the devil is fighting his tooth and nails to stop the game. You're born in sin. The heart's deceitfully wicked. You're walking around a dead person till you get saved. You're walking around in a in a water body, a water ship, a, a vehicle, and you're controlled by the spirit of the air, the spirit of the age, until you get born again. And then you, then it takes a process to un, the layers are so deep. It's like an onion. The more you peel off the layers, the more you cry, but you have to face off with yourself and society that you've been lied to your whole life. Your mama, your daddy, your grandparents, everybody lied to you. If you go and tell your granddaddy, you say, well, you got a snake on the back of your truck. That's the, that's the devil, right? Genesis three, right? You probably disown you and that's your grandfather he disown you because you sh you reveal that he's been believing a lie his whole life he would disown you because you call him out on something he couldn't see but you can see it because people get jealous because you see something a little bit deep deeper than they get because they can't see it so they get mad and get jealous just like Cain and Abel 
this is the this is what we're in. This is what I'm saying. There's so many beliefs. I'm surprised everybody's not fighting out in the streets. The only thing resisting is the law. The blue letter law holding people from shooting each other and stabbing each other and fighting. So that's why we have cults, culture. That's why we have cultures. Because every culture has to have police to hold you accountable in the natural, you know. Anyway, I don't know who could hear me. I'm sure some. One day you'll wake up, whoever you are, who's a legalist, who who thinks you got who thinks you got it all going on. Thinks that you are the judge and the lawgiver. Sad. I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry for you, legalist. I feel sorry for you, Jezebel, because Jezebel and the legalists are the same, because it's all about them. And they can't even see their own self in the mirror. If you walked with them one day, if you if they said, I never sin anymore, I'm perfect, I don't do anything wrong, let's say you just you say, okay, I'm going to come visit you for one week, uh, I'm going to go eat breakfast with you, lunch, dinner. I'm going to go on your job. And then I'm going to go to the house, see how you talk to your wife and your kids. For one week, I'm going to just, just watch and observe their legalism would have to go because you'd probably be calling them out on so many things. It's not even funny. <laughs> it's ridiculous it's ridiculous it's insanity to be honest with you it's insanity why Why is it faith alone just the fact that it's faith alone should tell you that legalism and revenge and persecuting somebody else and attacking somebody else faith that should tell you right there that you're you're in the wrong But you've been you've been propped up and brainwashed by your good old boy network that you think that has justified your evil behavior. You've justified your evil behavior. And it is evil. There's one judge and one lawgiver. And he alone takes vengeance. And he does not like you identifying with the snake. Or with Cain. And then justifying it. It just don't work. It don't add up. It don't add up. One plus one is equal to two. And when something don't add up. And it equals three. Or it equals five. You know something's wrong. And so the, 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 the deal is to fall down on your face. Cry out to God. Lord forgive me. And make a change by hit. And I'm not saying you can make the change because legalism is built. It's a process to leave legalism into freedom. Walking in the spirit is not rule based living. And so the only reason a person's in legalism towards other people is because they're beating themselves up. They're still under guilt, shame, condemnation somewhere in their life. Instead of being free, they're still a slave. So they want everybody else to be a slave like them. They live in fear, doubt, worry, think they can lose their salvation, think that God is still mad at them. God is angry with the wicked every day, but if you got saved, why are you still trying to believe? believe what's, what's the works of God? To believe on His Son, whom He has sent. It's finished. It's finished. And it's finished whoever else is a believer. Why are you trying to, why are you trying to stress them out, man? Why are you trying, trying to stress somebody out, woman? Man, whoever you are, be happy with your. Why aren't you happy with yourself? Did something happened. What happened? Go back to your childhood and figure out why aren't you happy with yourself? Something must have happened. That's all.